quite a few people have come out as you say and said that they were they played in those games yeah a-list celebrities and you know there's some names that of people that have already talked about being in the games and those are the names that i don't mind naming just to give context it was ben affleck and toby mcguire and leo dicaprio and then you know but apart from the actors it was also the head of some of the biggest investment banks in the world and the head of some of the biggest movie studios and politicians who were household names and people in the tech world that were about to take their companies public i mean it was it was unbelievable were those games legal or illegal because legal to play in legal to play in for sure legal i when i started running the games i hired uh defense attorneys and had them analyze the federal statutes and to help me figure out a way to do it legally because in the early days i wouldn't have done it illegally that was an evolution so you start as a basically an assistant to the games that mm -hmm. your boss is running. These are secret games, right? Right. Very secretive. Very. I remember Googling what kind of music do pick poker players like to listen to and what do they eat? And then I proceeded to make this incredibly embarrassing playlist with songs like The Gambler on it, you know, and uh, got this cheese plate and showed up for this very fancy uh, poker game. Take me on the journey of what happens next. Okay. So that first game, you know, I'm just shell-shocked, essentially. And also really mortified about the playlist and the cheese plate from Gelson's, you know. Um, but, but man, am I intrigued, you know. Getting to be a fl at 23 years old, getting to be a fly on the wall in this room where the these conversations are open and candid and you are I'm like you I've always been fascinated in psychology I've always been an information data junkie I love to learn I love to observe and so this was as compelling as it could be and then I remember at the end of the night because people were tipping with chips it wasn't straight cash I remember making three thousand dollars for refilling some drinks and so two things became really apparent to me. One, this was incredible access to a network of people that I don't know if I would have ever had access to and to learn from people at this age of 23 when I didn't know who I was or who, who I wanted to be. And number two, that there was something that happened when there was a token or a chip was the, was the economic system that made people very liberal because I'd worked as a wait, you know, I was a, I was a waitressing everywhere. I'd hustle my butt off for a couple hundred dollars a night. You know, all of a sudden the chip is involved and it's not real money. So I just became obsessed. And so I learned about poker. I wanted to learn the rules of the game, the vernacular. I, I didn't want to seem like a novice. Um, and then I started to try to figure out how do I stay in this room? So how'd you get from being the waitress in these rooms serving drinks to running your own poker nights? This is a funny story. Okay, so a couple months go by, right? And I'm like, I don't wanna serve drinks in these rooms. I wanna, I wanna start my own games. I wanna own these rooms. You know, this was someone who felt powerless in the world. If I could control these nine seats, you know, this thing that has so much control over these people that are so powerful, that was compelling. The money was compelling. I had this whole idea of how I would design the experience. That was compelling. Um, and also... You know, I'd sort of learned in those six to eight months that, that I was an entrepreneur. I was a problem solver. I could, I could think on my feet. I had metacognition. I could feel a certain way inside, terrified, nervous, scared, and still act with composure. These things that wouldn't quite 
present at a dinner table growing up with Jordan and Jeremy Bloom to culminate into an idea or, uh, you know, sort of like that seat, all of a sudden I just started to feel in my flow, you know? And so, but I was very loyal to my boss. And he is an interesting character. He was slightly psychopathic. Uh, so I, I, you know, I just bided my time and I tried to figure out how I was going to do this. And, and then he made it quite simple for me because he called me and he said, you're focused too much on the game. I need you back in the office. I'm giving the game to someone else. Her name is da 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 da. She's going to be calling you. And by this point, I had really kind of gotten into, like I had started to think about how I was going to build this game. I had, I was keeping um, the books on everyone. I was uh, recruiting players. Uh, you know, I, I really had, I was doing much more than just waitressing. And I thought about it and I was like, I got to take my shot. I can't just go. I can't just let him take this. Like this is, this opportunity is too important for me. So I had developed friendships and alliances. And so I planned a game and I moved it to a really luxurious location. And I hired a full staff of people and had them memorize everyone's favorite food order, drink order, uh, the names of their kids, what they cared about in life. Upgraded my playlist, a little Frank Sinatra maybe, I don't remember what it was, but it was better. Moved out of this dungy basement, had it catered by you know, the, the best restaurants in town, up, up, you know, like the best liquors, Cuban cigars. I mean, I wanted people to walk into this room and feel like they were in Monaco or feel like they were James Bond for the night. And I, I really, as the games wore on, I, I really like got into the science of scent science and temperature and humidity and, um, food and all these things that elicit the feel good chemicals. And so, and then I invited everyone except for my boss. <laughs> 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 and at the end of the night, it, the game went really late. And then at five in the morning, I got this text message from my boss and he said, get over here. And to this day, I don't know why I went. I just went and he made me go wait in this like bedroom. And he made me wait for a long time. And I I, I, thought, I said to myself, he's going to kill me. I mean, I don't even know what's going to happen right now. Because he was a, was a terrifying individual and very powerful. And just to give you some context, when I started working for him, I used to always say to him, I'm really worried about your soul. <laughs> like, you're not a nice person, you know? And, and I saw him in a business context. And then later when I got to know him, but I saw him with his family and he was very kind. Hmm. But he used to say to me all the time, you, you're going to, you're going to get trampled over. Like you need to toughen up. And so anyway, so he walks into the room and he has this terrifying look on his face and he looks at me and he goes, I'm proud of you. And it was like graduation day for better or worse. You know, it's hard to know how to feel about that moment now sitting here decades later. So from that moment when you host that first game, you upgrade everything, you upgrade the experience for your customers. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, you set your sights on New York, but for a variety of different reasons. And you move the games from being based in California and LA to being based in New York City. I lost the LA game. You lost it, someone yes. took it from you. Yes. <laughs> Karma. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna argue with that. Who, who took it from you? Uh, one of the most famous movie stars in the game. Leonardo DiCaprio? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, someone took the games from you, a movie star, said, I'm going to go do it at my house. Gave me an option first. Um, you can either start making less money. So this is very interesting. There is this player in the game. Who you can't name. I, I won't name. Mm-hmm. But they're a big male movie star. Making so much money. Okay. How much money are we talking? Like hundreds of millions? Yeah. Okay. But became, I would say, pathologically obsessed with this game and structuring the game so that he could win all the time. 
So making sure that he was the best player in the game and that there were no other, uh, there was no one better than he was. Dan Bolzerian said that he was kicked out of the game because he was really good. Oh, well, listen, I, Dan showed up playing this kind of ruse that he was just this clueless trust fund kid. Okay. And people bought it. And I sat, I sat there watching him and I'm like, this dude knows what he's doing, you know? And I, and I said, respect, right? Like you're hustling, I'm hustling, but you can't play in this game. You're gonna take everyone's money. You're bad for business. So I you, wish you the best. So you kicked Dan Bilzerian out of the game? I had to. <laughs> he was too good. Yeah. Okay, so he wasn't, he was telling the truth. Yeah. And yeah, for sure. So this, this Hollywood star that took you, that stole your game from you. So he was really obsessed with the game and he was obsessed with the money that he was making and being the biggest winner. And the truth is at the end of the year, the money that I was making by that point was millions. And he believed that was money that should be going into his pocket, even though by this point, I was traveling the world recruiting players. I had a staff of 20 people. I handled all the logistics. I handled ext credit extension, collections. I was on the hook if someone didn't pay. I had, I had a full business. I was paying my taxes. You know, um, There was so much work and sweat equity, and I had branded the game in this incredible way, and I... Uh, I, you know, I took notes every single game. Here are the areas that works, here it doesn't. Let me do some deeper research. Um, and, you know, just really think, turning down cash and cars and free rolls from the pros uh, to get a seat to protect the integrity of the game and, you know, like taking, you know, paying the debts from my own bank account so that to make sure people got paid faster. I mean, there was, it wasn't, I wasn't serving drinks anymore. And so when he said to me, you're making too much money, you have the option of making less and I'll let you keep the game. Look, by this time, I, I had become a strategic thinker. I had really been able to get out of emotional decision making, but I do believe that there's a time and a place for emotional decision making. And, and so I knew that turning down that offer, there was a large the odds were I was going to lose the game, but I knew that accepting that offer meant no autonomy for me, no freedom and no dignity. And, you know, what so was the offer? Sorry. I had to, would have to cap my salary and make it and, and have him approve how much I'm making. Why, what was he bringing to the table where you can just kick him out? Was he bringing a lot of celebrity power? Yeah. And celebrity power. Yeah. This in this town. So he, he was, he basically said to you, listen, you're making a lot of money. I'm, I'm bringing a lot to the table because I'm bringing celebrities and contacts and legitimacy to this. So I'll put a cap on your earnings and I get the rest of what mm -hmm. you're making, but I'll continue to do my part. Yes. So he kind of wanted to make you his employee. Right. How do you feel about that? I never want to be anyone's employee ever again. But how do you feel about him? Because I... when you said it, you looked a bit pissed off, to be honest. Uh, did I? <laughs> A little bit. You looked a bit like there was still a little bit of maybe resentment to that moment. You know, I think that there's just conviction to that moment. Right. Of, Because I think we live uh, in a day and age where a lot of people try to, um, not in a day and age, it's, it's reality that a lot of people um, try to misuse power. And I think it's really important to talk about you know, sort of dignity in the face of that and, and, and turning the offers down. Was, was, were those games legal or illegal? Cause legal to play in legal to play in for sure. Legal. I, when I started running the games, I hired uh, defense attorneys and had them analyze the federal statutes and to help me figure out a way to do it legally because in the early days I wouldn't have done it illegally. That was an evolution. If you love the Diver CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.